at some point, I'm going to stop doing this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start doing that. It's always a choice. Right. It's always a choice. Right. And I think when you make that choice, and that's hard, mm -hmm. um, then you will see that person, that light on the other side. Right. But I've got to at least turn my head mm -hmm. in order to see it. Hi, I'm Eric Weir, and thank you for joining us again for another episode of Stuttering Your Way to Success. Today, my special guest is my friend, Gail Awan. And Gail, you've done so much in your life. Uh, you're, mm. you're so full of energy. You love to give back. And now you're, you're heading the Urban League. Yes. I want to hear a little bit about that. I want to hear what you're up to. Yeah. And so tell me about the Urban League and what you hope to accomplish. Thank you so much. Uh, so I'm the president and CEO of the Urban League of the Upstate. Here in South Carolina, uh, we are about one of 92 Urban League affiliates, historic civil rights organization, been around for 100 and plus years, mm -hmm. uh, you know, after the Great Migration, mm -hmm. when uh, lots of African Americans were leaving the southern states and grow <clears throat> going to the north. Uh, the Urban League, uh, with some social workers and some other folks, were sort of founded because it's like now we've got this whole population, just like mm -hmm. we've seen in other populations, showing up from an agricultural society, community. Right. Sure, like sure. now they're here in the city, in Chicago, in New York. So how do we uh, acclimate folks to this whole new environment and way of living? That's why the Urban League started, focusing on education, uh, job creation, health and wellness. And those are still the things that we focus on today. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I've been in nonprofits like all my career. Sure. But the Urban League felt to me it was like everything all comes under one roof. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always done education, K through 12. Mm -hmm. I've done um, uh, domestic violence, sexual assault, every kind of nonprofit mm -hmm. literally there is to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it felt like at one point, you know, I was always on the back end, right? Mm -hmm. Picking up and supporting lives when they have collapsed. Mm -hmm. And this time I thought, you know, what would it be like, right, if I could be on the front end, mm -hmm. right, before it gets to that point, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And so for me, the Urban League is an opportunity to do that. Okay. Uh, and so, but what does it mean to be the Urban League of the Upstate? Right, right, right. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> so that was also kind of a special uh, challenge and an opportunity mm -hmm. because we serve the 10 county region. Okay. So I've got programs in uh, Pickens County. Okay. Uh, my largest education program is in Union County. Okay, great, great. So how do I show up in those communities, right. be there for that community? Uh, so it's been both a, a personal growth opportunity and just a, a great, uh, it's the best job I ever had. How important is yeah. education? Well, you know, uh, And what type of education? You know, everybody's, everybody says that, and I was, uh, I love your podcast, I listen to so many of the folks you talk about and talk to the the uh, seals, uh, Tom, that you, Tom Shea, Tom, Tom Shea. Shea, just on, yep. yeah, Tom. So you know, it even talked about training. This concept of training, right? There's formal education, there's informal education, mm -hmm. right? When we mm -hmm. look back at your parents or your grandparents or your great great grandparents, mm -hmm. how do people learn, right? Mm -hmm. So you can learn in so many different mm -hmm. ways, but for somebody has to see some sort of value in you mm -hmm. and want to give you something. It's that exchange, okay. right? You want to need to um, be receptive mm -hmm. to that training, to that okay. wanting to know something else. But then somebody has got to come around and give you this thing. Right. And I love hearing about people of all ages when they talk about that teacher, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that youth group leader, that person that taught them in an informal way, mm -hmm. but that thing that sparked them, mm -hmm. right, to go on to the next level of learning and the next level of learning mm -hmm. and lifelong mm -hmm. learning. And I feel like in so many ways I'm learning from you. Oh, very humbly. Thank you. Thank you. Very yeah. humbly. I, I've learned a lot. And, and, uh, and, you know, I'll, I'll mention something that I learned from my mother. Mm -hmm. And in getting to know mm -hmm. a little bit about you, understand your parents were important in your life yeah. as well. Yeah. And one thing I learned from my mother is she said, Eric, there are two types of people. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what's that, Mom? Those who are humble and those who are soon to be. 
And I was like, wow, that's pretty powerful. You think about it. The older I get, the more that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. what have you learned uh, from, from your parents that guide you today? Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks so much. I, you know, I had great parents. And um, I think at this point in my life, you know, especially when you're at that, when you lose your parents, mm-hmm. right? I don't have my parents with me. It's been kind of recent. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and and uh, that thought about like, okay, so who am I mm-hmm. without these pillars? Sure. Like, who am I now that I don't have this? And even though it comes later in my life, it it feels like I'm I'm like kind of, starting all over Mm -hmm. because I lean so much this way and so much that way so by what first of all certainly their legacy uh reminds me that there is no way that I am going to knowing what my parents had to go through Mm -hmm. you know the struggles that they with there is no way that I can disrespect that today right it's sort of this gut check okay Mm -hmm. they're no longer here so what are you going to do now? Like, mm. what's your role in this next phase? Because they didn't live and give and pass on for no reason. Right, right, right. right? Like no that doubt. Was about that, no that doubt. torch, okay, mm-hmm. enough mm-hmm. playing around here. Right, you know, right, you know right. get up and do what you're supposed to do. Sure. And I knew that. I mean, my peers were great. I knew all along growing up, some of all these things, that some of the things you talk about, these basic lessons, and then... I knew it, and then I don't know. You talk about getting stuck, right? And mm-hmm. but now it's like, okay, I have all these tools in my toolbox. So mm-hmm. when am I going to use them? And what makes me? What made me stop? Mm-hmm. What made it's me powerful. stop? And you powerful. talk about that too. Like when do we we get stalled or stop? And mm-hmm. so I think uh, this came at a time for me when I said, like, okay. This is it. It's either now or never, and a real mm-hmm. sense of urgency, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Not just to read it, but I mean to devour it, mm-hmm. to devour mm-hmm. it, and then say, okay, before I talk about sharing with other people what mm-hmm. we want to do with the Urban League, so I've got to hold this mirror up to myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. <laughs> 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 And I think I sent you a message. I was like, you know. I, you know, I'm 62. Is it too late for me? And right. you sent back, you know, Grandma Moses, wrinkle. Yeah, it's like, thank you for that chicken. I know them all. Know, yeah, I Sam know, Walton. Like, yeah, here we go. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> heard of heard of that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, it's never too late. Never yeah, too late. Yeah. And and so much can be accomplished in such a short period of time. Mm. And and that's as critical not to forget that. But look, knowing what you know now, and if you were to go back and talk to your 20 year old self, okay. Are there two or three things you would say to yourself? Um, I'm going to go back to the book again Mm -hmm. because you said something in there about uh, you were talking about the the top golf story. Uh, You want you went in thinking it was going to be one kind of a win, right? Right, Mm -hmm. but then it transitioned to be something else, which was even better. Correct. Right. So uh, in my 20 year old self, you know, oh, I'm going to, you know, I had it all figured out. It's right, going to look right, like this. Right, I'm going to do right, this. Right. I'm going to go there. And, it, you know, and then I think when that didn't happen, the disappointment that that didn't happen the way I thought it was going to look, you know, the person I thought it was going to be with and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Right. That was one of those things that just sort of, you know, the poor me moment that lasted mm-hmm. a decade. You know? <laughs> um, so, but but that thing about but the reality is, uh, looking back now, uh, it happened that way because that led to here. Right. I just don't know what's beyond that next one, and it's not always for me to know. Right. Going back to that learning, if I'm just making myself available. Mm-hmm. To the message, the teacher. What is it? When the student's ready, the teacher will oh, appear. Oh, sure, right. right. That yeah. whole thing. That's, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So that's what I I, w- I would tell my twenty year old self uh, is uh, um, not that she would listen. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot too. <laughs> not that I she have Levon Kirkland on it. He yeah. started off by choking his twenty year old self. But I would yeah. say it's it's going to be better than you ever thought. Oh, that's it's good. It's going to be better that's than good. you ever thought. That's good. That's good. Yes. Um, 
I always talk about success in, in, mm-hmm. in the book and book, you know, who's eating your pie and the podcast, studying your way to success. And mm-hmm. that was, came from you know, me having a, a stutter brought on by an automobile accident and a traumatic brain injury mm-hmm. and having to learn to deal with that and seeing every conversation was difficult. And then my therapist said, you can either, you are going to be a recluse and a failure because everything in your life will be hard. Mm-hmm. Nothing's going to be easy. Or you can learn that everything's hard, and by everything being hard, every conversation, every new acquaintance, every time you go to school will be difficult. If you can see these as obstacles you overcome, then every obstacle will be an opportunity. So oftentimes setbacks are yes. opportunities. So mm-hmm. have you had setbacks that shaped you? And if so, is there one you can share is how can setbacks shape you? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, when I was in school, uh, um, I thought that I was, you know, I cared, I cared about so many things, and I thought I was going to be a missionary, right? Oh, wow. You okay. know, and mm-hmm. I wanted to be a missionary, thought I was going to be a missionary, mm-hmm. cared about animals and people, environment mm-hmm. and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my senior year in high school, I ended up getting a pacemaker. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right before graduation. You wow. Know? And I remember I was all had my passport, and they said, mm, "We're not sending you anywhere." Oh, my goodness! Wow. And I was like, you know, but I'm <laughs> I'm going to be a great missionary. <laughs> yeah. uh, again, that was one of those things. Well, now what am I going to do? Right. Such a setback. Um, this why did this happen to me? I care so much. I want to help right. people so right. bad. Right. And, you know, uh, and, and it's interesting because my father, he started out with IBM and uh, he at the time, you know, these sort of uh, organizational psychologists, mm-hmm. uh, you know, were very involved in, in helping folks figure out their path. And yes. I remember I have one sister, uh, my sister, we were born the same day, the same month, exactly a year apart. Oh, my word. So I was born on her <laughs> first birthday. That's birthday planning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if the dad was a right. very uh, methodical fellow. Was it fellow. one cake or two? Or that's, that's <laughs> Just right. Right. So anyway, my dad took my sister and I, I'll, I'll never forget this. He took us, uh, we, were, we were in Atlanta area at the time, to Emory University, Dr. Sidney Janis, I remember his name, wow. when we were like eight, mm-hmm. eight and nine. Mm-hmm. These are my daughters. These are my kids. You know, tell me what I need to know about them. Right. Right, because he was going to structure our lives. Is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah right? Okay. There was a path for my sister and a path for me. And yeah. I remember uh, that night my, my sister got an abacus, mm-hmm. and she is in banking today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I got the story of Albert Schweitzer. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have to listen to this at bedtime, but I was going to go and right, be this right, thing. Right. So anyway, that was sort of ingrained to me. That's so again, wild. this was this this yeah. sort of a setback, mm-hmm. but I still am doing that work in a different way. Right, right. That's fantastic. What drives you uh, to want to help people or, or to give back? Because it's obvious it energizes you. It's not mm-hmm. some people give and it depletes them. Other people give and it energizes them. So what is it that energizes you about giving back and, and to other people and seeing them maybe mm-hmm. grow? Mm-hmm. Uh, some of it is about the people, but I think what I learned about myself also early on is I've done so many different kinds of nonprofits, and I love, love, love the nonprofit sector. What I realized, though, at a certain point in my career is there's a lot of nonprofits mm-hmm. out there, a lot of people that really care, that are doing this sort of frontline work. But so many times the organizations themselves mm-hmm. are just not working. Right. And I keep asking myself, if there's so many of us doing this good work, like, why are things not better? <laughs> <laughs> People are invested in something that's really not working. Right, right. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. It's like, uh, I shouldn't really say that. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I, then I really became passionate because I do care about business. And my father was an entrepreneur and a business person. I said, well, ma- the thing I care about is making sure that the systems, the organizations mm-hmm. must be stable mm-hmm. for those people to come and do this work. Mm. Right. So I care about the organizations. I've come from arts organizations, Mm -hmm. um, you know, artists that need to be passionate about their art and their work. Right. They they should be able to do that in a space uh, that is sound and stable and sustainable enough 
for them to do that. Like right. uh, people can't realize their full potential, right? If they're worried about the environment crumbling, they can't, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can't get a house, you know, mm -hmm. you can't get a mortgage, your credit is bad, all those things, but you're a really great artist. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, or, or child care worker mm -hmm. or whatever it is. So I said, well, maybe I need to just focus on these these structures and these systems. Mm -hmm. And if we say, uh, well, our, our good friend uh, um, <laughs> blanking out, EZ, my other EZ quote, oh, Ziggler. Yeah. Zig Ziggler. Zig Ziggler, yeah. Zig yeah, Ziggler. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Zig, yeah. Love Zig Ziggler. So, you know, Zig Ziggler said something about that he believed that this curriculum, this notion that he had, right, this philosophy could end poverty. The right, right, right. Poverty right. does not have to exist, mm -hmm. right? If people's minds were, if everybody was really doing what they needed to do at the highest level, yeah, that's true. there would be no poverty. Mm -hmm. So with all of organizations, including organizations like mine, I kept thinking, you know, maybe, um, maybe we're just not playing big enough. Mm -hmm. As an organization. True. How do you help, uh, help change mindsets <clears throat> or limitations? What as we talk about? If I were to talk to somebody and say, where would you like to be in a year? Or, or say, just, just, just pick a numeric or I want this massive goal in a year. Most people's first thought is why it can't happen. Mm -hmm. What's holding them back? Mm -hmm. So when you're going out representing the Urban League and trying to elevate people's experience in life and where they see themselves and how they elevate themselves, and we, we, we've talked about that. You, yeah. You've taken the book and you've done some yeah. things with it that's yeah. been interesting. But how do you elevate their eyes from, the, from what, what can't happen to what could happen? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think for me... Particularly the the book, this material, I felt like if I can, first of all, kind of walk through it myself, <laughs> right, then I can, uh, then my organization, the folks right. that work with and for me are also going to walk through it, right, mm -hmm. as an organization, because that whole concept is you have to see it to believe it, mm -hmm. right? We, what's my role in showing up? How does my organization show up in the communities that we serve? Mm -hmm. Are we strong are we doing the vision right. are we living into it ourselves right you know or too many times again people that work with within this sector are are often you know also the recipients of services in mm -hmm. someplace else oh sure right so anyway so uh we th that example and i hate to use the word like being an example but we certainly have to to show it and demonstrate it. we have to be sound we have to be fiscally sound as an right. organization we have to sure. be a debt-free organization right. the people that work for us right. have to be achieving their goals right. and be successful right uh, so there's a, a a lot of that and then instead of Instead of just addressing the 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 deficit, mm -hmm. always the deficit, because that will always be there, always be a gazillion reasons why, you know, and a lot of things. First of all, I want to also focus on again creating those real those bigger environments. I'm not saying mm -hmm. everybody. Some people mm -hmm. are just not going to go. Mm -hmm. Right. Some right. people are just sure. happy where they are. And I remember, you know, I remember we lived in Detroit, and my dad drove us through, um, you know, a really poverty-stricken area, mm -hmm. you know, and the liquor store was busy at 9 a.m. or whatever, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. people were around. And I remember my dad driving us through the community hmm. um, and, and had some conversations with us about um, that very thing, mm -hmm. like that choice. Um, and it, and it all, you say in here, this whole stop, start, start, stop, more or less. Right. Right. At some point, I'm going to stop doing this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start doing that. It's always a choice. Right. It's always a choice. Right. And I think when you make that choice and that's hard, mm -hmm. um, then you will see that person, that light on the other side. Right. But I've got to at least turn my head mm -hmm. in order to see it. Those are the four ways that make change. Start yeah. doing something yeah. you've never done before. Yeah. Stop doing something you're currently doing. Do more of something you're That's currently right. doing or doing less of something you're currently doing. And the encouraging part is we all have setbacks. 
of starting or stopping. Right. And and at the same time, each day is a new day, mm-hmm. and keep giving yourself the permission to dream and yeah. the permission to to make to make change. Right. Um, one of the things we've talked about before is the importance of industry in creating jobs. And, uh, and one of our guests, Bert Hess, was on earlier, and he was talking about film mm. and film in South Carolina and mm. offering uh, education through a university to teach filmmakers the craft. And one of the things he was talking about is many times artists will view they have talent, but they don't realize that the talent needs to be educated and crafted and filmed, I mean, and, and, and worked on, much yeah. like a, yeah. a football yeah. player or a golfer needs to work on their skill continually. How, how do they, they hone that? Uh, we've talked about film. How, how do you see film as being important in, in, our, in, in South Carolina and in the upstate that you represent? Well, I'm so glad you asked me that. <laughs> <laughs> because that is, uh, I think a, we know it's a game changer for any geographic area, right? And you and I... I I hate to say we talked about it because you really don't talk to me. But <laughs> <laughs> the grapevine. I don't know what to yeah. say. Yeah. How to describe it? The, yeah. the, the word. Yeah. So, so this I, I remember because I I was very interested in the, in this industry. So the Urban League uh, in L.A. Right. My counterpart in L.A. Their workforce development initiative, of course, is all around the film industry. Right. Because. That's the jobs there, right? right? Uh, and recently, uh, my my colleague in Atlanta, mm-hmm. right? They started a whole new initiative with Tyler Perry Studios around mm. the film industry. They have an MOU. They work right. with the with the with the governor with, with the city. Um, and what they do, though, specifically, is to provide the vendors and suppliers. Mm-hmm. Right for that industry, the small businesses, the entrepreneurs mm-hmm. that need to support that industry. So you know, we sit geographically in the perfect location, the perfect location right, for this right, to right, happen. Right. Certainly, great things are happening down in the Low Country, but in so many ways, with the education, you know, institutions we have here, again, right between Charlotte and, and Atlanta. Um, we know it's it's just a matter of time, and we certainly have the talent and, and all the folks here. So I, I met enough of the folks doing the mm-hmm. work, mm-hmm. right? And when I think one of the things when I came to you was about, um, uh, like, what would it take for this really to happen? You know, mm-hmm. there's these starts and stops and starts and stops. Um, and, and and you shared some things. And then I said to you in, a, in another text message, I said, I don't know how I worded it, I said, uh, if those things could be addressed, mm-hmm. just tell me yes or no. I think I said, just send me a thumbs up or a right, thumb down, right, right, right. literally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Could it happen? Right, right, right. And right. you said, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, like then I'm like, then I'm all in, mm-hmm. right? And I've been talking about this. We have a partnership with the South Carolina Film Commission. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a, sort of appointed us as their upstate um, a community-based organization mm. to help. Uh, our campus, our, our office in Spartanburg is at the Georgia Dean Johnson School of Business. Wonderful. We wanted to be at the business school because mm. we're focused on the business of the industry. Correct. Right? Uh, we did our first class for GRIPS, a mm. free class for GRIPS. Some mm. people came and they didn't even know what a GRIP was. Right, right, right. right but they sure. knew they were kind of good with their hands and right. they wanted to do something. End of the month, we're having our first class for hairdressers. Oh, nice. How to be trained, right, to get right. your small business ready to do right. that. Right, uh, We have a film symposium, a statewide film symposium that you're going to wow. be involved with. We're rolling this out. It's not just about getting the job. Mm-hmm. It's about your life. Right. And achieving all of your goals. We know entrepreneurs, small businesses, especially in an industry like film where the, the pay is sporadic and different. Oh, you sure. know, right. We have to have a different structure for that. So I've been talking about the sort of film industry, creating this thing for about a year. Mm-hmm. But it was literally only last week uh, I met with uh, Alan Smith, who is the uh, president of One Spartanburg, the mm-hmm. chamber there, mm-hmm. economic mm-hmm. development, chamber uh, and tourism and someone from the county, Mm -hmm. and they decided they're going to support this initiative. But what Alan said in an email last Friday, he said, one Spartanburg and the county of South Carolina, and and the uh, county, uh, Spartanburg County, want to support the Urban League in bringing this new industry to the upstate. Great. And just to hear those words, Mm -hmm. it's like, 
this thing that you envision and you talk about, and then yeah. suddenly, finally, somebody acknowledges it. Right. And I kept thinking, wow, as a nonprofit organization, to have an opportunity to bring a whole industry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And think, you know this better than anybody, all the jobs, the economic impact of it's, that. Well, it's a multiplier effect with film, with, 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 with tourism, with uh, hotel, food. Uh, people keep coming, coming back, coming back. And it's in the, I mean, it's many, many times over the, the, the dollars that, that are spent. And I grew up in a town called Fayetteville, mm-hmm. uh, Fayette County, Georgia. And there, we never even heard of film. You know, I think we were using instant cameras when I right. left, right? And uh, and then, you know, I did to come back. It's, it's the, that area is the hub of film. And there, there are more, uh, there's there's more film shot in Georgia now than there is in California, right. which is which That's is remarkable. Right. And s- South Carolina could could certainly be, be, be benefit from that. But working for tax incentives, That's working right. That's uh, right. to create to create jobs, it is is it's, it's a multiplier effect. It's a multiplier, and we have uh, another local uh, corporation, uh, Cargo. Uh, mm-hmm. Toby Stanchel was the CEO there, mm-hmm. and the Cargo team. They actually are going to move a component of their Greenville office mm. to Spartanburg, to a warehouse complex. So uh, again, last week, I'm, I'm walking around this, this um, abandoned cotton mill right. with some of the giants of finance and, and CEOs and Bill Barnett and great people, right? And they're all talking about how we're going to build another virtual studio mm. and a screening theater and create this thing in what was once a cotton mill. And I'm walking around saying, oh, my God, this is going to happen. Right. Isn't that this amazing? This is going to happen. Yeah. yeah. My dad would think that was very cool. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's that's uh, empowering people and, and really changing lives. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. If you were to meet somebody or somebody came to you and said, Gail, I'm just a, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to make change in my life. I want to grow, um, you know, but I, I'm stuck, you know, you know, what would you, what would you suggest they do? Mm-hmm. I, I think uh, this clarity about, you said, what is it that you, what is it that you want to do? It's easy mm-hmm. to say, well, I want to do this. And I want to you know, but what are you what are you willing to give up to do that? Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many. I feel like there's so many distractions. There's just so many distractions that keep us looking outward at everything right, else. Right. Right. And to to to, to really put all that um, someplace else and say, okay, if this is just me, honestly with me, what does I want to do? What is my biggest dream? Mm-hmm. Right. You know that thing about you know shoot for the stars. Right. 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 Sure. Of course. So what is what is your biggest dream? Um, a young lady came to me and she was talking about you know mentoring and being. She wanted to do X, and I said, you know what? You're, you're so talented. Mm-hmm. Why are you not talking about wanting to be the CEO of the World Food Bank? <laughs> right. Like, right. Wait, really? Like right, why right, are you right. limiting yourself? Right. Right. So. This limiting ourselves. Why? Because it's safer. Right. It feels more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Nobody I know has. I'm just all the things I. Nobody I know has done that. Mm-hmm. Nobody's gonna listen to me. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, but it's not about all those things. Those things could happen, and they could not. <laughs> right. Well, that's so true. So true. So true. I mean, true. look at you. You do. Every, I mean, you do a lot of stuff. You know, you're, well, you know, because you're a wealth management guy, you should only be thinking about these kinds of things. But like, here you are having conversations with people like me. <laughs> you know, you have your creative things. You're out there, you know, riding horses, <laughs> shooting turkey. And like, you do a lot. You have a full life, a full life. And that's success, right? It is. And it's, it's learning from other people, honestly, learning from mm-hmm. people and being a, a listener. I try to learn something from from everyone I meet. And some of the best advice, this is crazy, that I've ever gotten was from an Uber driver. Listen, right. to their, listen to them and, and how to show appreciation to people. And then, uh, but just about everybody you, you, you can learn something from. And I think one of the greatest gifts I was ever given was a car wreck. Mm. You know? And mm. it wasn't mm. until uh, 38 in a church where the pastor said, be grateful for the things that that you know are your cross to bear, mm-hmm. and he suggested giving a prayer of gratitude, you know, for what was holding you back. And I remember being picked mm-hmm. on, teased, mm-hmm. hazed, I mean, stuttering. It was horrible. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna 
say thank you, God, for this. And it was not easy, and it was very hard to do. And and when I did, over the next three years, the stutter slowly went away. So it went mm. from being a, a major inhibitor to occasional, you know, but but not all the time. But it was a big transformation, and that was just gratitude. So how important is gratitude in your life, and how does it impact both you and other people? Uh, I, I, I do wear my gratitude on my sleeve. Um, first of all, I'm really grateful that I get to do the work that I do. I'm very grateful about that. I just, uh, I just feel like, you know, this... If we're if we're not fully going to do it, mm. then it's then it's such an insult to, to be there, mm-hmm. right? If you're not going to, I'm not saying it's going to always work, right? But at least I have to be fully all in the game, right? You know, um, and just like I just heard in one of your your other pod, podcasts, uh, talks from Tom, you know. Uh, Everybody may not want you to be successful. Everybody may not be able to be there to yeah. support you. Right. But um, it's about me because at the end of the day, when I'm making my list, as you talk about what I'm going right. to do tomorrow, right, right, right. Right, was I all in today? Did I play full out today? You know, mm. if I made a mistake, did I clean it up and own up to it instead right. of trying to pass it off? Right. Um, because I don't know about tomorrow. So I've right. got to be all in today. Um, so... That's why I'm so excited to be here. It's powerful. It's powerful. Well, if 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 you were to to give you know one, two, or or three pieces of advice to somebody today, <laughs> uh, who's younger, they're they're up and coming, they're trying to figure out their future, um, and they they're full of energy, but they they're just they're just uh, unclear. Was there something that you would tell them? Hmm. Um. Uh, one of my professors uh, told me once uh, she used to give out these little quotes at the end of the class right okay. a little quote for everybody some right. little like a little fortune cookie kind of a thing mm-hmm. and, and when I got mine she said when a thousand zebras go stamp when a thousand horses go stampeding by you're the zebra <laughs> no. and I remember being I was so upset That's right. I was like <laughs> right Right. Great. <laughs> you know, but now and she's since passed on. But now what I realize is um, I don't have to worry about the crowd. Be myself. Just show up at myself and just trust that when the zebras come along, they'll find me. Oh, that's awesome. And I'm not alone. And right. I have found, uh, met, you know, folks like you and other people that I don't know. Why, where, how, it makes no sense. I was mm-hmm. like, that's a zebra. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's no other reason why right. we would connect. Yeah. Right. But there is something uh, internal. Right, right, right. right. Something right. internal. And, right. and we all belong somewhere. Right. We all belong right. somewhere. Right. Well, thank you. It's great having you on. Your yeah. your energy fills every room you enter. So uh, so so good to have you on. And your you. your your gratitude you do wear on your sleeve. <laughs> it's infectious. So it's hard to be around you. Not 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 be grateful. So so th- th- thank you for coming thank on you. today. So thank you for your time. And, uh, and and thank you for all you're doing and, and trying to get the curriculum out to into technical schools. And hopefully it it, it makes an impact yes, on other people's lives. So, so so thank you so much. And interesting enough, yeah, it's uh, who's in your pie has now been translated into Vietnamese and it's being translated into Chinese, which is no, funny. That's amazing. Is in Vietnam they don't have uh, the term pi. So they have to they had to like to to change it. So it's 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 interesting to see how it is, is it starting to go into, into uh, other languages now. It's 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 fun. That's exciting. But thank you so much thank for being you. on the show today thank again. You all. Thank you. All right.